Without further ado, it's a pleasure once again to ask Sheikh Fadlullah Ha'iri to address us. And um, for those who have their cell phones on, please put them on silent uh, or put them on vibrate if you are expecting some emergency call. Um, the floor is um, to Sheikh Fadlullah. La ilaha illallah, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, marhaba. Yesterday at Jum'ah, uh, Sheikh Kabir gave me a very good clue about my talk today. He spoke from his heart, describing an illumined biography, which is appropriate in our time, in that he had been looking for a way that is true, that is in every way sustainable, to reach a point in himself that is constant. And he found that through the line of Sufism, and Islam and his love of Quran. And one thing leads to the other, as always does in life. And this is now who he is, uh, an immensely lovable, likable person from every quarters, in the States, in the East, and in the West. And, and so he gave me a clue about, let me also do a bit of similar thing about my own, if you like, a bit of a biography. I was very fortunate in that in the last citadel of Karbala, it was the last part of a hundreds of years of movements of caravans and the ups and the downs and the warfare that as always had been throughout the world. But we were very protected, at least I felt very privileged and protected. And I remember old people close to my father often referring to an event or somebody comes in with a catastrophic story, there has been raids and tribes have killed all the sheep and so on. And an old man will suddenly say, you know, inna lillahu wa inna alayhi raja'u. All of it belongs to Allah and Allah is showing us. Or if there is suddenly a wedding or something, people are very pleased with themselves. Suddenly one of an old man will say, kullu qawmin hardly finishing a sentence, but the others understood that it means كل قوم بما لديهم فرحون. Everybody is very happy with what they are doing and they think they are the best and, and so on and so on. So I was puzzled and I could understand that between them this was a very high level conversation without too many words. And so as I grew up, I had the trust and the faith that the Quran has it all that it is a blueprint that gives us the description of how situations are and what is the fundamental foundations of those situations as well as the prescription. You hardly find any of these ayahs in the Quran unless it gives you this is what it is and this is how you can resolve your misery, fears, anxieties and out. So often it's like that, very condensed. So I thought I would share with you today a story, most of which I had encountered as true little, as all often are in stories. But I am not a creative writer, but I thought I will do a metaphysical spun on a human story and in between to show you the ayahs of the Qur'ans that truly unpluck the whole issue and unpacks the whole issue. So it is really to encourage every one of us to return back to the source. And if there is any hope for the Muslims, wherever in the world, is that. Otherwise, this business of we are Muslims, let us unify, we are Christians, let us unify, let us have interfaith, is a lot of, if you like, goodwill, but doesn't hold at the end of the day. It seeps out. And once they leave the place, they are back again at each other's throat because that is the sunnah of Allah. No two people can accept because there is no two-ness. In truth, there is only oneness. 
So you will revert back to a very basic issue. Who is he? Who is she? I thought he was my brother, but now he's taken more cake than I had. Or whatever, whatever, whatever. It never ends, you see, until you begin to see the whole story, the whole truth, through the lens of oneness, then two-ness becomes enjoyable and, be, in fact, becomes amusing. You see, otherwise, it's misery. And uh, you know what that means. Everybody has had enough of it, I think. Maybe not enough, but <laughs> the story is as follows. After harrowing days of bombardment of Salzburg, there was a day of calmness. Half of the buildings in the city and many thousands of homes were reduced to rubble. They actually estimated more than 17,000 houses. And at that time, Salzburg may not have had even 100,000 population. A beautiful city of high culture. The American and Allied forces have reduced the beautiful city to utter ruins. The friendly allies were expected to arrive in, at the destroyed city any day soon. The early morning sun sprayed strays of hope upon the devastated city. Max, the musician with his cello, walked gingerly and very slowly towards the center of residence plots. It's a very famous square in the middle of Salzburg. With this elaborate baroque fountain and surrounding buildings, most of which were now in ruins, he walked slowly towards a broken bench and sat gently with his cello resting on a stone block. He began his improvisation, celebrating cycles of life and death with a note of refrain celebrating eternal goodness in between. Max was already a well-known figure in the musical circles and festivals of Salzburg, especially in the annual celebration of Mozart and Haydn. A gentle breeze blew dust off the piles of rubbles, and Max pressed his red silk handkerchief firmly on his mouth. The stench of dead domestic animals and birds had become more intense with the rise of the sun. No, can't hear you. He brings forth the living from the dead, and the dead from the living. He revives the earth after his death. He it is who gave you life, and will cause you to die, and then revive you to a new life. Every soul shall taste death, and then to us you shall revert. So I'm not being grim. I'm following the Quranic pattern in that whenever there is life and death mentions, especially, for example, Surah Al-Mulk, to show you that as far as Allah is concerned, it is not sequential like this. Allah is not in time, nor does he follow a time sequence. So the ayah says, Surah Al-Mulk, he created death and then life. So they are ever together. And these ayahs tell you, personally, individually, as well as collectively, as a city of Salzburg, that life and death, they circulate, cycle, go up and down. If it is not natural disaster, then more and worse are human disasters. More than 100 million people were slaughtered in Europe in the last century in the name of something or another, goodness or civilization or fear, anyway. Max started playing the seasons and human dramas between sadness and hope. He looked around the empty square and thought to himself that he now may represent all of creations, alive and dead. He continued playing. After a while, he felt the passing figures on the other side of the square. A mother and her young daughter were clambering over the rubble, making their way out of the plaza. The young girl began to pull the mother's, mother's hand towards Max. She was wearing a long gray flock, frock, obviously an old hand-me-down. Max greeted his unexpected audience with a nod 
and carried on playing. Beautiful Isabel was looking at Max attentively, and as he felt her glance, he stopped playing and looked at the sad face with fear and tiredness. Today was her birthday, and her mother was taking her to the outskirts of the city to her cousin's house, which was not bombed. The girl smiled and said, I am Isabel, and I'm 12 years today. Do you think music will come back to our city? Her anxious face was mixed with hope. I am playing a requiem for the dead, Max spoke soft, softly, and celebrating life at the same time. Do you like it? He played a few more notes. Isabel's eyes welled up with tears, and her mother, after a while, gave her a little hug and whispered encouragement to resume their arduous journey. Max held Isabel's hands in his and promised that she will have an enjoyable birthday. Mother and daughter began walking amongst the piles of stones and debris and the smoldering stench. A little gray kitten emerged, meowing to Isabel. She kneeled down and gently took the kitten up to her breast and asked her mother permission to keep it. Isabel and Max waved at each other before she disappeared in the shadow of a side street. He who created death and life to test you as to which of you is most righteous, indeed, he is the Almighty, the All-Forgiving. Now, righteousness here means presence, as Max was, that you celebrate that which is gone, that which is now, that which will come, all of it is wrapped in the eternal presence. This is celebration. This is the test. Otherwise, test for what? There is some big fat, some giant creator sitting somewhere laughing at us, testing and trying and misery. What is this? All that it means is return back to your hudur, to your presence, ready to declare you own nothing, you control nothing, you have no idea as to how life came and when and how your life will also continue, not end. It's your body that will be returned out of loyalty to where it was made, from where it emerged, which is the earth. No soul knows what it will earn tomorrow, and no soul knows in what land it will die. Nobody knows. You can never tell. The air that goes in may not come out. This is, again, another mythal. وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالِ نَضْرِبُهَا nas. These are the true similitudes. These are the true wonderments of the Qur'an. For you, to, you and I to remember, to be aware, this is the most precious thing you have. What is the precious thing you have? So-called your life. What does it mean, your life? In order for that to resonate with eternal life. So if you don't resonate with that, you have missed your capital. You've lost it. It's not about longevity, many more years. Many more years of the same misery, except that you, as you get older, you are less capable of dealing with it. You know, you are less healthy, less strong. And unless you begin to resonate with eternal life, genuinely, truly, within your own heart, unconditionally, not wanting to impose it on others or impress others. You just know it. So therefore, you have arrived. That is the meaning of Insan al-Kamil. We have so many of these things eulogizing about the prophets, about the imams, about the others, about the perfect beings. But what is it going to do to you if you yourself have not ended up in the point from which everything began? You have not completed it then. Insan Kamil doesn't mean a perfect person. It means completing the journey and the purpose of your life. And that is to know that life is eternal. That is to know that Allah is ever present, eternally, beyond the limitation of place or time. Within three years, Isabel was a promising student at the Musical Academy and played a concert celebrating Max's 80th birthday. On that occasion, Max gave her a, 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 his red silk handkerchief and told her whenever she is sad or depressed to put this handkerchief on her face and pray that she can fly into the perfect harmony and bliss. To God belongs all that is in the heavens and earth 
and all matters shall revert to God. So therefore, what ownership do you have? What is there that you can truly, utterly rely upon? What is your security other than inner joy of knowledge that life is eternal and you have been given a spark of it? Many years later, Isabel was on a holiday in Salzburg showing her kids the city and its beautiful surroundings, surrounding mountains after everything had been rebuilt. Upon visiting the old market square, they went into the new museum and amongst the art ex exhibits, there lay the beautiful cello that belonged to Max. She could not stop her tears from flowing. She sat on the museum, on the large museum banquet, hugged her children and told them her story with Max. Was not the land of God wide enough for you to emigrate? He who made the earth for you a cradle and marked it in it paths for you. After a short while after the, a short while after the war, Isabel's parents had emigrated to Canada. And there they enjoyed their new life. One sad day, the news of the death of Isabel's favorite uncle, Ignacio, reached her after coming home from school. He was a Jesuit monk who was the last living one in a beautiful monastery which had now been sold to a hotel group. Ignacio had decided to join Albert Schweizer's lepers colony in Belgium, Congo. After a few months there, he was disappointed in many, many ways and died brokenhearted in darkest Africa. Isabel married Zeki, a successful tax consultant whose father was a Turk and mother as German. Soon they had two children and Zeki was enjoying his material success. Family holiday home, Caribbean regular visits and occasional skiing. Peace be upon me. The day I was born, the day I die, and the day I am resurrected alive. This should have been earlier. Never mind. Read now. <laughs> we had, as you know, not practiced. It doesn't matter. The Quran has no back to front. It is. Now read. For those who disbelieve, the present life has been made to appear attractive. This is Zeki. They mock those who believe and those who fear God. They embrace fondly this life in preference to the hereafter. This is Zeki. He is engrossed. You understand, Zeki, there are many of them here and there and everywhere. Yeah. They all want to say, never mind, you know, I have children to feed. I've got to get, I've got to get the money. I've got to, I need a tax consultant. You need Zeki. When the children were in their teens, Isabel was overwhelmed with her inner emptiness. And she often remembered Ignacio's last words to her before leaving for Africa. Be patient, for it will take you 40 years before you begin to have lasting fulfillment beyond pleasures and pains. She thought to herself that she still had a few more years to attain this prophecy. She was a frustrated housewife with a husband. You know what I mean. <laughs> or vice versa, who was engrossed in his worldly obsessions and pleasures, yet a good man. At the end of the day, you know, yes, we don't want to kill him. You know. <laughs> a Turkey Sufi group was visiting Toronto. And Isabel was thrilled by the singing of communal zikr. I don't say dhikr because it's Turkish, so it's a zikr. <laughs> And Sheikh Mustafa's booming voice, Zeki was not interested. Once Krishnamurti was asked this question, I was there. The wife was becoming spiritual because she was unhappy and suffering. And he was, what can we do if he is not interested, I am interested. He said, both of you are heading for a collision. <laughs> and went silence. <laughs> Zeki was not interested. He was a rational, sensible, worldly professional. A year later, she changed her religion again. Now, the children got used to this. Every year or two, she comes up with a new thing. So they know, they whisper to each other, yes, she, there she goes again. You know, so. 
This time she will join the Rifai Sufi group in Toronto. On her birthday, Zeki always tried to bring in all the gifts and all the things and still didn't touch her. She was moving in one direction, he was trying to ha hang on to another. She became so ill that she locked herself in the room. She even thought of suicide a couple of times within a month. The local Rifai Sheikh, Sheikh Salim, was her new spiritual mentor. And she was fully, fully absorbed in the new cosmology of life. She loved the Quran and began to pronounce Arabic words with some fluency. And to God prostrates all who are in the heavens and earth, willingly or unwillingly. Zeki and Isabel, all of them are in prostration. He for Al Ghani, he who has wealth and power, Al Qawi, he for other aspects of Al Ali, Al Ghafoor. Mm. Those who believed and those who migrated and exerted themselves in the way of God, these indeed expect the mercy of God. God is all forgiven, compassionate to each. Zeki was quite understanding, but the emotional and spiritual dis distance between the couple grew wider and wider. Isabel goes for Hajj and was trampled over near the position of the stoning of the stones of the shaitan. I mean, if you haven't had that, then your Hajj may not have been fully completed. <laughs> She possibly passed out and vaguely recalls that angels lifted her up out of the torrent of human congestion. She recovered soon and decided that she was rescued by direct divine intervention. <coughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> direct, the hand of Allah. Sheikh Salim referred to this blessed event in a few of his talks on Thursday nights. His repertoire of spiritual miracles was growing in number and intensity. <laughs> Isabel unpacked her Hajj suitcase, which was now full of scarves, prayer beads, prayer rugs, and Eastern perfumes that she didn't like. <laughs> she put aside a few of these items for herself and distributed the rest. A few months later, she decided not to keep any of souvenirs that she had had all over her life. She began to feel the light of Kaaba emerging from within her own heart. It was beaming out. A while later, she remembered the wisdom that when you have discovered a diamond mine, you are no longer interested in playing with pebbles or semi-precious stones. Her worldly interest and interaction dwindled to the bare minimum and essentials for survival. She longed for the ultimate arrival. O oh, you who have faith, be wary of Allah and seek the means of recourse to him. My earth is wide and it is me that you must worship. Finished? No? Finished? No, the last one? Yeah, carry on. Had your Lord willed, all people on earth would have believed. Whosoever does good, male or female, while having faith, we shall make him live a good life. Now a good life means sustainable inner delight, goodness, and reflection, and awareness, and the constancy of that fullness of you are an individual, you do exist, but because of that eternal, mysterious life in you, your existence is not just limited to your miserable ups and downs, body, mind, and intellect. It's far, far more than that. Continue. O oh, believers, respond to God and his messenger when he calls you, that to which will give you life. So you see this puzzle. What is it that gives you life? The ayah addresses us who are supposed to be alive. He says, oh, those of you who have trust and faith in that, you will come to know that which is the only truth and source and essence of knowledge. Follow that until you come to know that there is another life. 
there are many, many such ayahs in the Quran, but in different facets, which I think one of them also will come later. Real life is eternal life. And you and I and he and she have a spark of that in us. And if we do not dwell upon that spark, ride on its wings to realize that that spark carries the same characteristics of the eternal life, then you haven't done it. Then you remain always between certainty, uncertainty, frustration, anger, and occasional happiness and goodness and so on. And then you fall also into the many traps that the Quran described, such as al-hakum al-takathir. Our number is increasing. You know, this tariqah has more people, or Islam has more people. What does it mean? What do you mean more? More of what? Where, where are you when you declare Allahu Akbar? When the absolute is referred to, all relative issues disappear. Isabel grew, outgrew the spiritual state of her Sufi group in Toronto. I hope it won't happen to anybody else. And Sheikh Salim, he was out of his, he reached his limits, you see. And this. So he recommended her to visit Istanbul, as always. And the Grand Sheikh Aminullah. You can't go and look for him because he's not alive as yet. After much physical, mental, and spiritual preparation, she was on her way with two other Sufi ladies towards Istanbul. It took them a week to settle down after the numerous mishaps, stomach bugs, bed bugs, and other misadjustments. <laughs> then the three ladies from Canada plunged into the arduous life of the tekia. There are nine different names for tekias. Tekia is, means where you rest your back. This is tekia. Mutaka is, is actually a pillow, but there are numerous other. The North African names differ, such as Zawiya. Zawiya means a corner, so hopefully you get cornered and, and leave your presumption, assumption, your personality, your profile, you are this person or that person behind. So they were in the life of the tech. After two weeks, they were enjoying the hospitality and epiphanies of day-to-day -day Sufi lives. You know how it is when you, are, when you have all of this, you're saving your money. You're, so every 10 minutes you have an epiphany. You know, God's hand comes to you and you, you, know, you say, you don't know what happened, miracle upon miracle and so on. And there will always be Sheikh Salims who will add these to the repertoires. Enormous miracles, it all happens miracles. They don't know that before the breath, after the breath, in between the breath is miracle of the miracles. So that's why we are chasing pebbles, you see. Isabel was beginning to come more and more, become more and more secure in her spiritual journey and convictions and the real purpose of life and the sacred light within the heart. Several times during the end of Zikr, she nearly passed out and was revi revived by Turkish rose water. And maybe also Turkish delight as well, <laughs> full of sugar and things. And things. One evening after Zikr, Sheikh Amanullah asked her about her stay in the Tekia. And she gave a glowing account of how happy she is. He invited her for coffee for the next morning. She trembled with joy and anticipation. Her eyes and hearts were focused upon the Sheikh as she sipped the thick coffee. She was in ecstasy and her heart overflowed. The Sheikh asked her about her stay. This place is heavenly, and I feel I am already in paradise. The Sheikh looked at her, smiled, and then laughed quietly, murmuring, I hope your mood becomes a mood, for what we want is constancy, not an occasional visit to a garden. There is no hidden matter in heaven or on earth except in a manifest book. They who believed and were pious to them, glad tidings in this present world and in the hereafter. So, if you're pleasant day to day, little bits of pleasure or good feeling or generosity, if that does not extend to its source, which is in your heart, which is the sacred light of your ruh or your spirit or whatever name you give it, 
then you are not truly progressing in any sustainable, real way. Yet more pleasure, which will always lead to its cancelling side of this pleasure. Sheikh Amanullah continued, Paradise appears as glimpses to begin with, until you realize that this is the only true purpose of life. Happiness of, uh, on earth is short-lived and always tinged with sorrow and fear. And the human quest is to return to the eternal garden. If you say that Adam was exiled from paradise, then the only worthwhile drive for his offspring is to return back. Isabel sighed deeply, acknowledging all of this truth and also her own weakness. The Sheikh nodded sympathetically. I pray that you will be whisked away on the flying carpet of your faith and you will realize that whatever you loved and wanted is already within you. He touched her shoulder gently and said, in this world we are like kids playing with pebbles. Sharing, caring, buying, selling, giving, take, taking, and all other human activities until the experience of the presence of the sacred treasure in your heart becomes constant. Your soul is divine. Once you know that the biggest mine of diamonds is within you, you won't care anymore for inferior gemstones. Celebrating joy is good, but better than that is beyond all experiences of pleasures or joys. Earthly dualities remain our battlefield until we experience life through the perfect lens of unity. The world of suffering can be springboard to the ever-present divine offering. Human intentions and actions can be sublime or ridiculous and then sacred until sacred presence is realized until then we experienced only then we experience infinite constant bliss the purpose of life will become clear through dedicated intention proper attention and appropriate action if any then comes the experience of sacred oneness that envelops and permeates all of the universe. Don't ever be distracted by anything else until you are able to celebrate this truth. Enter the garden. There is no fear upon you, nor will you grieve. Those who feared, who feared stand in before their Lord and curb the self from its whims the garden shall be their abode. You see, the garden implies beyond space and time, beyond where we have been caught in this world. Otherwise, it's a pleasure which will always be tinged and always have the clouds of that it will end. That is why you see, whenever there is worldly celebration, there is a sadness that increases as the time comes closer to the end of the party. You see, this ending. And everybody will disperse. That gatheredness which gave us a slight hint of the original oneness of singularity before the Big Bang or whatever is now going to disappear. Unless these small little worldly pleasures leave you to the zone in you, undescribable, total, utter joy of that which people term as union. There is no such thing. There is only one. These are all manners of speech. I want to get closer. That is why I run away from those who are desperately seeking or on the, par on the path. Say, they come to you and say, Sheikh Sahab, am I closer to God now or not? <coughs> run away from these people. They've got, made God as a measuring rod. How far is it? How near it is? You know. So it is another real. It is metaphysical. Do not deny the physical. This has measures. This has ups. It has down. But it is all emanating from the metaphysical, beyond the physical. And this knowledge has been going on for thousands of years. As she was fastening her seatbelt on the return journey to Toronto, 
Isabel thought that she is now entering a new stage of her life and was longing to communicate with her long dead uncle, Ignacio. She also felt much compassion and understanding for Zeki and the rest of humanity. Upon her return, Sheikh Salim realized the transformation of Isabel and asked her if she could begin teaching and play her role in promoting Sufism and spirituality. She smiled to herself and agreed gently to look into his request. But deep down, she was so content with Allah's perfect ways that she was simply basking in the joy of witnessing his perfection. There was no personal drive to do anything, good or bad. She felt truly gripped totally by the divine presence and was an ecstatic <coughs> celebration of timelessness and in time. A week later, she had a dream of Shaykh Amanullah who asked her to sit with him after his breakfast and share his coffee again. She was nervous at first, but calmed herself and sat beside him. He touched her shoulder and looked straight into her anxious eyes and said, now you taste the truth. Now your taste of truth is becoming regular. You must pay more attention to the worldly plays and dramas. Don't be afraid that they will afflict you. You may occasionally burn a finger or two, but it is necessary for completion of your journey. A time will come when you will see the seamless connection between earth and heavens. Novice Sophies often talk about the outer and the inner and the higher and the lower. And he is with you wherever you may be. And we present these parables for mankind, but no one grasps them except the wise. Listen to all wisdom, but remain in your heart's sacred cave of utter oneness. See all dualities through the light of unity and acknowledge all, for all of it emanates from the sacred oneness. Do not deny any and celebrate the eternal light that has brought about the flash of your life. Play your role in the time. Play your role to the tune of sacred, the sacred music maker. That is completion of your journey. Salam, salam, salam. La ilaha illallah. Salam. Put your trust in God, and God suffices as a trustee. He shall guide them and set their affairs in order and admit them into the garden which he made known to them. Thank you very much. Shukran, Sheikh Fadullah, for addressing the topic sacred expression in the Quran, and as always in your inimitable way via storytelling. And I'm glad uh, that this tradition is gaining ground and uh, we can see the popularity of a number of uh, stories uh, and as well as a number of novels where these themes come through. I think Sheikh highlighted the questions of cycles of life and that life as eternal goodness, the lights and delights, the question of presence, hudur, which came through the story, the wonderments, the al-amthal in the Quran, the similitudes, the um, how to complete one's journey and how to journey with the all rich, uh, how to ride on the sparks of light um, from the heart and also um, highlighting the question of constancy in joy uh, in life to bring about that fullness, that total joy. How to avoid the traps of life and importantly, how this balance of the sublime and ridiculous works out throughout life. Moving to the seamless connections on earth and heaven and ultimately the theme of unity of oneness of oneness, of salam, of salam.